Call you into the office and with the academy manager, and yeah. they'll see you down and just say they'll tell you like straight to your face like um, there's not going to be enough contract for you, um, and we're gonna have to let you go. So oh, to start off the video, Bilal's just going to explain a bit about what it's like playing academy football in the UK. So go on, take it away. Yes, thank you. Uh, so yeah, playing in academy is a, it's a great experience. Um, you get to get to train pretty much every day and I started when I was 12, 13 years old um, got scoured from a uh, London a London scout uh, for Norwich and then from there it was like called a centre of excellence from there I went on uh, went on to the academy uh, then I was, I was successful in that trial and managed to get signed on, on that day that I actually went to the academy and uh, yeah, played, played against like Colchester um, I remember that game was just we totally battered them, um, <laughs> and then yeah, I ended, up, yeah I ended up doing bits here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. are there any clips on that? Are there any clips? Nah, unfortunately there's not. Uh, there's a, there's a, like nine nine v nine uh, oh, type okay. thing yeah. indoors. Yeah, but it was a it was a nice nice day for me and my family, and like I was I was rejected like two times by Tottenham and Fulham before that, so yeah I, I didn't give up at that time and uh, managed to managed yeah. to get signed. Um, first ever academy. Um, from there, I went on, uh, progressed through the, the age groups, and uh, I found a lot of success on the 14 and the 15th level, uh, where I won a Play of the Season award, um, Goal of the Season award, um, oh, and then that's good. got called up to the England under youth boys on the 15s. Um, yeah, went went into camps. Uh, a few times and then managed to play a few games as well in Italy. So wow. we've got like, four caps uh, in Italy. We played against Japan, Japan twice, Saudi Arabia, Mexico. Yeah, and, uh, it was a great experience to, to play with those uh, high elite players. Can yeah. I just interrupt you as well? Like, I don't think you guys understand what he's saying. So he got rejected by Tottenham Hotspur, rejected by Fulham, but still managed to keep going and managed to sign a contract with um, Norwich City Academy, who at the time they were prem, prem team as well. So, you know, that's it's not that's that's not um, an easy thing to do. So it just shows it's never the end of the road. Your first trial, your second trial, most likely won't work if we're being honest. Like you have to understand that in your journeys as well. Like I know, eventually when I'm back from injury and I'm start trialing, no matter how big my first opportunity is, I'm most probably not gonna get um, you know get signed or you know get an opportunity from that but it's all about learning and using that as confidence to go again and keep going but yeah that's you know that as you can hear it works keep on persevering and you can get there and it's, you know play of the season international call up for England which is a massive thing I'm sure you had some you know you was in the same age group as some of the you know some of the, the boys yeah. are playing play now um, so yeah it's a, that's it's really important that you keep going you don't give up no matter the outcome of any trial yeah so got to the Oh, under 16 level and that's when like big decisions are made to whether you're going to get a, a scholarship for like two years um, and then I managed to get my own quite early like, under under 15 level um, which was uh, I was quite surprised I never I wasn't thinking about getting a new contract I was just thinking about playing playing games and just uh, enjoying enjoying time and also we were doing schooling as well so we would do half days of school and then go to training. Um, and then I actually moved away from home when I was 13 as well. So um, uh, we, we, that allowed me to train pretty much every day and uh, be closer to the training ground and also done my education uh, in Norwich as well. We had a, where they had a school for us to go to. And yeah, it was all, it was all perfect really to a great balance of playing and um, playing football as well. Um, yeah, and then uh, I transitioned to under 16s and then moved on to uh, youth youth team uh, kind of situations uh, where that's like under 18s, under under 18s level. I had I had some taste of that when I was 16, uh, also around 15 as well. So I was being accelerated quite quickly, um, and uh, I really enjoyed the challenge of playing a higher higher level above my age groups and uh, got to the under, under 17, under 18 level, carried on, carried on progressing 
uh, until until I stumbled, uh, my progression slowed down. Um, that might be down to me not doing the basics right, um, not doing the extra work that I need to to do, and yeah, so I just slowed down, prog progression slowed down. Uh, I wasn't getting pushed up levels as much, but I still carried on, and uh, uh, towards the towards the end of uh, 2018. I think I was getting pushed to the under 23s now, so that was a that was quite a big step up as well. The physicality, the pace of the game changes from under 18 to 23s, and uh, yeah, from there you get a little taste of what's like to, to kind of be like a first team player, like because under 23s train every day, and uh, they're bit this they're so close to the first team, and. Yeah, so under it, now we're in our under 18s, uh, end of the season under 18s, and a uh, new academy manager comes in and looks at the squad, looks at me, um, and then he decides to change me to like a left back, right back kind of kind of player, and I'm usually a number 10. So it's a quite <laughs> surprise. Gone from being one of the most creative on the pitch to being one of the most offensive. Yeah, yeah. So. Played my first game at right back against Reading, and uh, yeah, I was I was really surprised that I done I done really well in that game. Really helped my team uh, on that day, and we got the the winner yeah. well, as well. So it's a, it's a great day. That's good. Man. It seems like every time you stepped on the pitch, they won. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can I just interrupt you quick? So, does, like, how does again? You said you know you weren't you was at a stage where you were flying through the ranks, like your your um your. He was going, he was progressing quicker through the age groups than probably most of most other yeah. players. But then it came to a point where it slowed down. Like, is that happen a lot? Was that your first hardest challenge, you'd say, like playing at that level? Yeah, I think I would say that was pretty much the, the hardest the hardest situation I, I was in. Yeah. So I wasn't I wasn't getting uh, picked for England, um, and uh, I, was, I was really desperately trying my hardest as well to to get to that level again. Yeah. But I think. When you when you play like with freedom, a lot of people say when you play with freedom, you're just not thinking too much about oh, I want to get to this level, I want to get to that level, exactly, yeah. and just focus on the where you are right now and trying to develop yourself. And I think that's when you you excel the most. So exactly. yeah, I'll, I'll just say like don't think, don't overthink stuff. Yeah. Um, just be in the moment and try and take up the moment, yeah. and then the rest will take care of itself, as they as they say. So, at what point would you say it sort of started to go, you know, wrong? Because, you, like, what led yeah. up to you getting released? Would you personally say? Yeah. So, when I moved, when I moved to the like, like left back, right back, um, that's when, that's when I, I actually did not want want to do that because I thought I would be much effective up, higher up the pitch. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this this really like took uh, changed like my mindset really to try and be a more defensive player because I was always trying to be like getting into the box yeah, uh, yeah. even though Naturally. playing right back yeah, yeah. I had the fitness to do that anyway so I wasn't worried too much about that um, but then but then again it comes, it comes to you defending 1v1s as well and for me that was wasn't really a, a great thing to, to be doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> being uh, I was like number 10 uh, playing Playing high up pitch or number eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that that's when I realised like I'm I'm not sure what's what's gonna happen now. So um, did you sort of feel like you was like not getting frozen out, but you was like, getting a bit frozen out of the picture? Yeah. You know, the managers maybe didn't see you in plans, yeah. like in future plans in that position. So they but they knew you're good enough, but they didn't. So they wanted to play you somewhere. So they sort of maybe put you left back to keep to keep yeah. you playing. But you know, maybe they had that. Is that okay? And, yeah. You know, luckily. Luckily as well, I can use both feet, so I'm comfortable. So they were stitching me left back or right back. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, I was trying to see that I was, I was just filling gaps. Yeah. Because um, we didn't really have much um, fullbacks uh, at that time. So okay. that's I should I should have like really understood what was going on more. Yeah. But now I see the whole picture, and I should have I should have done a lot more to like push myself, create a move, or yeah, uh, looking looking else elsewhere. Um, okay. Yeah, and then towards the uh, under 19s, um, now I was under 19s, I was still playing under 23s um, at that time. 
and the 23 didn't have fullback, so that's why I think that's why I was, I was also pushed up yeah. to that level. Uh, yeah, and, and I wasn't really doing that great in games because yeah. I was I was trying to get assists or goals yeah. as as a target, but instead of instead of focusing on the defensive side. Of the yeah, game. instead of defensive side. But if you look at that now, um, you know that if you look at that now, the way football is, yeah. you look at players like Trent. He's not the, the best defensively. Obviously, football's changed now. I guess if this was now and you was playing like that, you had that mindset, you'd probably be encouraged to get further up the pitch. Because now, you know, wingers more. I mean, right backs, uh, they're basically wing backs now. You know, you don't have many. If you to play right back now, you need to have the quality to get up and down the pitch to be attack. You know, be able to to be a threat in the opposition's um, final third and get up and down the wing. So yeah, obviously, as you know, it's timing as well. You never know if this was now. Yeah. You know, you could have been Fulham's, I mean, Fulham, you could have been yeah. Norwich's next um, Trent Alexander. <laughs> yeah, but having said that as well, we had we already had like young young players from the academy who were yeah. playing in, in those positions, so okay. it's Which really been hard. tricky to yeah. get into the first team anyway. But yeah, and it was under 19s, um, that's when I was, I was told that I wasn't going to get another contract with the club and uh, told that I was going to get released towards the end of the season uh, in 2019. Um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite like hard, hard to take. Um, at, at the moment, I, I don't know what to say to them. How did you find out that they took, call you in? Did they call you on the phone? Yeah, they into your office. Yeah, they'll call you into the office and with the academy manager, and yeah. they'll see you down and just say they'll tell you like straight to your face like um, there's not going to be another contract for you, um, and we're gonna have to let you go. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite hard to take yeah, yeah, at the time. Course, yeah. But I've, I've been through that anyway. Um, when I when I was at trialing for Fulham, um, that's when I was actually with the academy, training with them. Yeah. I think this was on the 10, 12. Yeah. Yeah. So that that one, I actually cried. Yeah. When I when I was told um, that I wasn't gonna of be off. Like you, you think, especially from your sort of perspective, it's not like you was on a six-week trial. You came up through the ranks. Yeah. Pushed up. You progressed quick. You know, you got to the under 23s, and then to be told that, you know, when I, this is sort of the the main bit I want to, you know, get touch on on like this bit of the, the video, like there's no guarantees when you're playing academy football. You could be playing for, for for Barcelona, you could be playing for Real Madrid, you could be playing for Manchester United, any of these teams. There is no guarantee that you are going to get a sign a first team professional contract. No matter what, you can get up to the under 23s. You know. Um, so I don't feel like a lot of people, they put so much pressure on going and playing for an academy and you know going through the academy, which is definitely a way to go to sign a professional contract. I personally, and I'm sure Bilal knows so many people that played academy when they were um, younger, now don't even play football. They don't even play football that they, they gave up because there was nothing you know for them. Or you know they've gone on to play football, but they're playing sort of at the semi-pro level, lower levels. It just shows it's not, it's more about you know, firstly, you need to, you know, you need you need to be a good player. You do need a bit of luck. You need to sort of build, you know, have the right connections to be able to get yourself out there, try and get a move and stuff like that. But you know, there's no sort of guarantees of you getting a professional sign and first professional contract. Yeah. So could you touch on a bit from like, your perspective the reality of playing, you know, academy football? Like, there's no certainty and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. So being in academy is a, is a great opportunity to to make to go pro. Uh, obviously, because you're training every day and. That's that's one of the key elements where you are, you're trying to get the most amount of time with the ball, with with the team training, and uh, this all will build up to you gain experience, gaining confidence. Um, but but then it comes comes again the the hard the hard side where most people don't talk about is the fact that you there is an element where you're. You might not get the, that contract, that next, exactly, yeah. that next step up to, to the next level, to the next age group. Um, but this all comes down to you at the end of the day as well. Uh, if you're willing to put in that work, put in the, the time, the effort, and uh, the sacrifice, uh, because there's a lot of sacrifices that you need to make. Um, That's not a very, your friends. very good point. Uh, maybe your family as well, like I did. Uh, how old were you when you moved out? 13. Yeah, I was 13. Um, Such uh, a young age, man. <laughs> yeah, but but then again, yeah, you just you have to sacrifice uh, these 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 kind of things to to get to that level. And yeah. uh, a lot of players have done that. 
Wrap up the video, could you just give some um, advice, some tips to people in academy or wanting to play academy football, like what they can what they can do to try and get the most out of it and you know try and progress their game and improve that to get themselves to the next level? Yeah. Um, if you're not in an academy then um, don't don't see it as a as a negative because um, there's many other opportunities for you to, to excel and you never know who's watching. Um, so yeah just you just have to keep grinding and remember there's there's always there's always going to be someone watching you um, at this moment it's going to be tricky because uh, of what's happening around the world mm. but um, just keep your head down and uh, work 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 um, try and get as many touches with the ball um, exactly. that's one of the most important things trying to get um, the hours in with the ball and also just build up your fitness physicality is going to be important when you're trying to progress to the first team. That's another good point of, you know, trying to improve your game to become a good athlete as well, not just be the most technical player on the pitch, because even the most technical players now, compared to like the last 10 years, they're probably stronger and they're probably quicker and, you know, just more athlete, athletic than the standard player. So that's another good point. Yeah. Um, and then if you're, if you're in an academy at the moment, um, take advantage of this you know, great opportunity. Um, to really advance your skills uh, but also keep in mind that you, you actually need a lot more extra work try and do more sessions on your own um, as you as you might not be able to get as many reps as you can within with a group so try and do individual sessions sessions uh, which will really benefit you moving forward 100%. Um, and also yeah don't don't overthink stuff um, like saying, like thinking about the, the next contract or the next um, this call up. Um, try and stay in the moment and try yeah. and take care of that uh, enjoy element. And, yeah, and of course, enjoy enjoy the process. Enjoy enjoy being in the academy environment. Um, you're living your dream. Um, exactly. So uh, try and take every moment um, uh, in your stride. And then just you never know what could happen and that work but yeah just exactly. like grind it grind it keep grinding exactly yeah. um, I'm going to leave Bilal's socials in the bottom he's out in the US now he's killing um, the D1 soccer he's playing for what is it University of New Hampshire yeah yeah University of New Hampshire um, so yeah go check him out and yeah if you enjoyed the video again smash that like button if you're new hit subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one I ain't got no chill